Welcome to the Spot On Insurance Podcast, brought to you by Insurance Licensing Services of America, ILSA. This is Ted Tavares. And this is Arlene Tavares coming to you from beautiful Puerto Rico. Today, we'll be taking a closer look at a topic that affects every single one of us. But before we get started, don't forget to click on the subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode. And now here's our host, Doug Foresta. This is Doug Foresta. Today with me are Ilsa's very own Tamika Johnson and Myra Ferragino from the tax team. And between these two ladies, they have over a decade of experience. And we're going to talk about what triggers corporate tax returns and annual returns filing requirements. So Tamika, maybe to start with you, just what your, what your title is at Ilsa? I am the Annual Returns and Corporate Tax Returns Department Supervisor. Excellent. Thank you. And how about you, Myra? I am the Annual and Corporate Department team leader. Today, we're going to be talking about what triggers corporate tax returns and annual returns filing requirements. And I thought maybe we could start with the, the first of all, I, I guess the first question would be, what what does trigger corporate tax returns and annual return filing requirements? Well, normally after an agency obtains its license from the Department of Insurance, it is required to register with the Secretary of State. Uh, you're registering for your certificate of authority to do business in that state. So uh, this, can, uh, this can trigger an annual or biannual report filing requirement with the Secretary of State, or it can trigger a corporate tax return filing requirement with the Departments of Revenue. Thank you. And I know that one of the things we're going to talk about as well is uh, the state ta- uh, corporate tax return filing requirements with the Department of Revenue. Can you say a bit more about that? Well, with corporate tax returns, um, one of the main triggers for the tax filing requirement is when you register with the Secretary of State for your certificate of authority, but it's not the only way. And every state has its own definition of doing business. And also, uh, the agency's corporate structure and how the agency is registered with the IRS can determine if they're required to file in certain states. So uh, most states go by the agency's fiscal year to determine the due date. So an agency should always consult with a tax professional or an attorney before they register with the Secretary of State. Myra's going to explain the annual returns. So I'm going to go ahead and explain that. After you register with the Secretary of State, the Secretary of State often requires that every agency conducting business in the state become qualified or registered. When an agency is registered, you are required to file an annual or biannual report, which lists your officer information, business information, shares information, registered agent, etc., these reports are filed on an annual biannual basis. The state may ch- change fees of the filings of the returns. Fair to file a return in a timely manner can result in penalties and fees, loss of good standing, or revocation of certificate of authority to do business. Thank you very much. I know the next topic we're going to talk about is the winding down a business and the DOI license cancellation and withdrawals. Can you say a little bit about that? And maybe, Tamiko, we could start with you. Um, yes. Um, if the agency say, uh, goes out of business, uh, it would need to cancel its licenses with the Department of Insurance, and also it would need to um, withdraw from the Secretary of State. And the reason is, um, even if your license is canceled with the Department of Insurance, since you're registered with the Secretary of State, um, the state is still is going to expect, you know, if it's required, an annual or biannual return filing or a tax return because you're still saying that you're doing business in there. So you have to cancel the license and also uh, withdraw. And what happens if you fail to, to do that? Well, the, the Secretary of State will still expect to have the ret- annual returns and the biannual returns filed with it, and the Department of Revenue will expect their taxes until you close the, those accounts up. So that's a huge takeaway then for our listeners that it's really important. Do you find that this is something that people don't think about when they're winding down a business? Like, do you find that people, uh, well, obviously we won't use any any names to protect the innocent, but do do you find that this is an issue that comes up? Uh, Yes, it comes up quite a bit. And also um, you can have an agency, let's say they apply for a license with the Department of Insurance and the the state requires, let's, let's say that this particular state requires that you set up your certificate of authority with the Secretary of State um, before you can get that license. Well, sometimes the agency, they change their mind and decide not to go through with the license, but they don't take out the certificate of authority. 
And so those filings are still affected. And so it kind of catches them off guard because they're thinking, I, I canceled my license with this one department that should have done it. Thank you. Can, can you say a bit about also the SOS and DOR corporate compliance reviews? Well, um, this is Tamika. Well, basically, it's an audit. Um, we would check to see if you have an active license with the Department of Insurance, and we also check your status with the Secretary of State to see if you're up to date with your annual report filings or your biannual report filings. And also, in some states, um, if you're not up in good standing with the Department of Revenue, that can hurt your status uh, for your certificate of authority. Now, if you uh, if we do a Secretary of State and Department of Revenue audit. Then, um, then obviously we also on the Department of Revenue side be checking to make sure that you're you have paid all your taxes and you're in good standing with the Department of Revenue. Also, something else to remember, like with reinstatements and withdrawals, um, if the reason why that you need a reinstatement is that you owe late tax returns, then you will have to file the late uh, tax returns in order to get in good standing. And also, like with withdrawals, there are some states that require a tax clearance, and some states can require more than one. So in both those cases, you still have to try to get, you have to, if you have late filings that are due, you have to get those filed in order to either be reinstated or to get your withdrawal. Spot on Insurance is sponsored by ILSA, Insurance Licensing Services of America, America's premier licensing and regulatory compliance experts. To learn more about ILSA and the services they provide, visit ilsainc.com. The next thing that we're going to talk about, I know, is the DOR business tax registrations. Can you explain that and and say a little bit more about it? Um, yes. Um, some states require that you uh, apply for your your tax account in advance. Um, some states, you know, once you file your tax return, they'll automatically set it up, but not everyone. So basically, um, in the application, you're telling them what your corporate structure is, um, how you file your taxes, um, whether you're an S corporation or a C corporation, and basically you do that before you start filing taxes. So some states it's a requirement; they won't automatically set it up. I'm wondering if uh, either you, Tamika or Myra, or perhaps both of you, have some examples or stories about these topics that we've covered. Yeah, we had one company that accidentally registered in a state and claimed that the state was their domicile. And actually, they should have registered as a as a foreign agency. And what ended up happening was that their tax returns ended up being filed on another company's record. And so they ended up having to basically uh, get another certificate of authority and kind of had to, had to go to the Department of Revenue in order to try to get that account corrected because try to get it moved because it was, they were saying that they weren't they had filed their taxes and they actually had. Oh boy! So it's very, it's very important that you know the states have different forms, and it's very important that you're reading it and that you're using the forms. It could be foreign, domestic. It could be going by um, what your corporate structure is. You have to read it. So otherwise, it can mess up your filings. Thank you. Yeah, that's a again a really important takeaway for listeners that uh, the little things are the big things, right? <laughs> the details <Yes>. matter. <laughs> Myra, how about you? I'm wondering if you have any. Any stories from what we've discussed? Well, there is a couple of states that if you fail to file the annual or biannual report, you'll have to um, register the business or get a brand new certificate of authority in the state because once you don't file it, your agency's revoked. So that can cost the company money of getting a brand new certificate of authority. So. I'm going to just say this, that it sounds like part of what you're saying here is that it might be worth it for me to think about investing in some help to with these issues in order to avoid some of the costly, in other words, like, I guess what I'm thinking is you, you can pay now or pay later <laughs> in terms of, in terms of. Yes, it's, it's yeah. very important. Yes. Before you register with the secretary of state that you either speak to an attorney that specializes in that or a tax professional because once you register, then they're going to start expecting these filings. My next question for you, as I said in the beginning, I know that you both have a lot of experience. What is the number one thing that you think or you'd like to see people consider before they get this ball rolling that perhaps they don't often consider? 
Uh, they basically need to keep in mind that it's not just about the Department of Insurance, that there are other departments involved, and they need to think about the Secretary of State and the Department of Revenue, and that once they start doing business in that state, about the requirements that are needed in advance before they actually, especially before they they register with the Secretary of State, as you start thinking in advance about the consequences of uh, registering with the Secretary of State, and to keep in mind um, that the other departments also have requirements. I am sure that you must find yourself oftentimes cleaning up <laughs> other people uh, when people come to you, but it, it's 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 a little bit later, right? <laughs> After after the kind of after the fact, and you find yourself cleaning up messes. Well, you know, say like you order, you do have us do a corporate compliance review. Basically, yes, a lot of the times people when people come to us, it's because they're revoked or they receive a notice from the Department of Revenue, and it's already after the fact that something has happened. It's usually when they come, and that's when they uh, kind of end up figuring out, you know this state requires annual, an annual return or this state requires a tax return. It's usually when it's kind of too late, but it's possible to, to rectify the problem, of course. But it's it's one of those things that a lot of times they have a whole bunch of licenses and they've already registered with the Secretary of State and it's more than one state that they need to be tracking and they, and they didn't realize that. Thank you so much, Tamika. I'll leave it to you and give you the last word. Anything else that you want to share with listeners before we close? One of the best reasons to work with someone like us, like even if you're handling the issue in, uh, in-house, we can still provide guidance and let you know, um, you know, what to look out for and what to expect, you know, around the corner. Like you, you may not even want us to handle like everything, but it just could be, you know, certain things that you just don't want to handle, like DBA renewals or something like you want to, you can handle the annual returns, but you don't want to handle some of the other things that are also expected. Tamika Johnson, Myra Ferragrino, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Doug. No problem. Thank you. Direct your podcast questions to iask at soyteam.com. Share this podcast with your friends and remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. As always, thanks for joining us. And please remember, we'll be answering this week's podcast questions at Spot on Insurance Facebook Live, Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern.